Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Fiddle of Eagles Now. We have a ton of very interesting Eagle news and rumors coming up in today's video, as always. But first, we have a mailbag coming up this weekend, and so as we always say, hashtag Eagles down below. Ask any related Eagle question you want to be answered, and if you are a subscriber, which you have to be to get on the video, we will go ahead and pull your question. If it's a good one, and one of our seven-ish questions that we do every single week, throw it up on the video, and you guys will get your question answered by yours truly. So, mailbag time, go to below and ask away. All right, let's jump into the latest Eagle news and rumors. As we always do, we start with the best first, and that is the Miles Sanders dilemma, as people are calling it right now in Philadelphia media. Today, you probably saw on Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter, at Real Thomas Mott, I retweeted, Miles Sanders has been elevated to, or I guess activated, to be able to play, pra practice, and then play. It's a lot of words to say there. Practice and then play on Sunday, meaning he is probably going to go ahead and play against the Saints on Sunday. So he was eligible to return this week. They have activated him. He has 21 days in the practice window to practice. He will practice this week. He should be good to go. You'll see him on the field uh, on Sunday, barring a setback. Now, Jordan Howard and Boston Scott, as we'll see a little bit later on, have been fantastic in his absence, leading many people to say, oh, you know, don't disrupt the chemistry. Don't play Miles Sanders, which is coming from a lot of, like, very prominent Eagle reporters and beat writers and, you know, TV pundits, and it's just like, what? Like, it makes no sense. I'll show you guys an example here in a second. Uh, this is the number one ranked rush defense that you're playing against in terms of the Saints on Sunday, so it's going to need a lot of work and a lot of help from all running backs involved in order to go ahead and keep running the football first and having success against, again, a good defense in New Orleans at the link to get our first home win on Sunday against the Saints. Now, for instance, how about Ruben Frank, who's a very well-known NBC TV guy up there in Philadelphia. He wrote an article talking about what to do with Miles Sanders. We'll throw the quote up on the screen right now. Quote, I'm not saying don't play Sanders. I'm not saying bench him. But the Eagles have a good thing going right now, and it doesn't make sense to change. I like Sanders, but you can't know the fact that this offense has been more effective without him. There's a lot of other factors. The O-line has played better. Sirianni's play calling has improved dramatically. And Jalen Hurts has been more efficient. But Scott and Howard have just been consistently productive in a way that San Sanders hasn't been, end quote. I love how he just completely contradicts everything that he's trying to say. Like, his points are immediately contradicted by counterpoints, and it makes absolutely no sense. First off, I would start Sanders immediately. He is the best running, running back on this roster. And even though Howard and Scott have had success, Sanders is better. Like, he's more elusive. He's faster. He's a he's a better running back overall. If he's healthy, he starts on Sunday, in my opinion. I mean, Frankie's talking about how now the Eagles have been better running the football without Sanders, okay? They started actually committing to the run once Sanders got hurt. Like, it doesn't matter who the running backs are. They've actually started calling running plays. That was the problem. With the fact that Sanders wasn't playing well, he was averaging like five to six yards per carry before the injury. They just weren't actually running the football. And now that they're running the football, it makes sense to put your best running back forward and then let him go ahead and ball out. Like, I think Sanders is going to be a fantasy... I, I mean, genius pick right now. If he's sitting in the waiver wire or you want to trade for him for one of your buddies, I just did that. I acquired Miles Sanders because he's going to get a ton of carries. Now, that's not to take away from what Jordan Howard and Boston Scott have done. Howard's been fantastic this year. 211 carries. 5.1 yards per uh, uh, carry, three touchdowns. I would keep feeding him. I would continue to let him be the number two running back and not the number one running back because Sanders' elusivity and speed first, then the power of Jordan Howard is a crazy good one-two punch. Likewise, Boston Scott, he's been playing well at the same time. I mean, look at the numbers here, 5.1. They're almost identical to Jordan Howard in terms of overall carries and yards per carry and touchdowns. However, when you get down to the nitty-gritty, Scott is not as good as Miles Sanders. Scott is running well because the Eagles are running well right now, and Scott is still a good back. Like, I obviously keep him on the roster, but and I would try to get him involved a little bit, but Sanders needs to be the number one running back on this roster. I think he will be the number one running back once we go ahead and get him back on Sunday. You can mix and you can mingle, but really it should be Sanders 1, Howard 2, and then Boston Scott. That should be the order that we're going here. The idea that the Eagles, you know, are better without Miles Sanders because Miles Sanders wasn't playing well at the beginning of the year is just like, do you even watch the Eagles? Like, like seriously, the reason that Miles Sanders is not successful because they never gave him the darn football. And we whined about that literally for months here, and they finally started doing it once he got out. I expect him to play. I expect him to start. I expect him to get most of the carries on Sunday for Philadelphia. Pin comment down below during the ad break. Go down and answer. Should Sanders take back the starting role uh, at running back when healthy? Type Y down below for yes. Or, I guess if you're crazy, type N down below for no. All right, we move on. Playoffs. Yes, playoffs, right? I mean, that's the great, uh, fa the famous quote there. Um, obviously, playoffs are kind of on the forefront of our minds because we just had a big win against the Denver Broncos, and hence, at 4-6, and six, one game out, all of us in Philadelphia, at least I am thinking, postseason. However, I'm at the gym today, you know, getting rock swole, as I normally do, watching, of course, the TV during my little, you know, in-between reps there, uh, and it is Mike Greenberg on Get Up said Philadelphia is going to make the playoffs, and I, and I was like, okay, well, I mean, the national media is now talking about it. They had a whole segment there um, on Get Up. Now, again, we talked about reasons why. 
bye. They're four and six. They're in the playoff hunt. The schedule is just very easy coming up the next couple of weeks after the Saints win and if they're at the Saints game. And if that's a win, and they keep this train rolling and get to 5-6 and six coming up after Sunday, their playoff chances in terms of percentage of likelihood to get there skyrockets with a win. Like, 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 look at this. So when they beat Denver, they had a 26% chance now after the win to make the postseason. If they beat New Orleans on Sunday, it goes up to 40% in terms of chances to make the postseason because New Orleans is one of those teams right now, as we'll see, very much in the wild card hunt, right? Now, if they beat the Giants, it's above 50%. If they beat the Jets, again, easy schedule, they'll have a 67% chance to go ahead and make the postseason at 8 Eight and six, again, likely, they'll go ahead and make the postseason. So I'm feeling confident. Now, I'm curious what your confidence level is for the uh, Eagles right now in terms of making the playoffs on a scale from one to ten. Right, one being like not confident at all, which I don't know why. Ten being like they're going to do it for sure. I'm at like a seven or an eight right now, but give me your thoughts down below right now. Before we go ahead and get into the wildcard picture and see which teams we must root against as Eagle fans, a quick shout out to our friends and sponsors for today's video, BetUS, chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet, promo code Eagles125, you guys know the drill. Put $100 down, turns into a 225% deposit bonus when using our link and our promo code to bet on maybe my picks of the week. Let's go through them. Here they are on a Wednesday, uh, sitting at 22, 16, and 2 on my bets this year, because we keep track of that. Uh, Colts at Bills, the over-under is 50. Give me the under on that for sure. I'm taking the under 100%. I will bet Philadelphia. Philadelphia, who are actually favorites at home against the Saints. Scares me being in the link. Scares me with that good Saint defense, but Trevor Simeon does not scare me. Give me Philadelphia minus one. The Packers are only two and a half point road favorites at Minnesota. It was kind of an off week for Aaron Rodgers. I think kind of, you know, not playing the week, the week before. A little bit of ruts there. I think the Packers roll the Vikings on the road. Bengals are one point favorites on the road at the Raiders. The Raiders might be able to bounce back from that embarrassing loss to the Chiefs, but the Bengals coming off a bye, I think are going to be able to have a very successful day. And the Cardinals are minus two and a half point favorites at the Seahawks. I'm taking a lot of road teams this week, minus Philadelphia. The rest are all road favorites, which I feel good about. Arizona going ahead and beating up on Seattle by more than two and a half points. So get your bets in. Chatsports.com forward slash Eagle bet. Promo code is Eagle125. Eagles125, excuse me. Okay, here, of course, is the wild card picture. Now, the Rams are seemingly the five seed. They seem to have that locked up. And, of course, you know, Dallas could fall down a little bit. Uh, sorry, Dallas would not fall down a little bit because they're going to win the division. The Cardinals could fall down a little bit. The Packers uh, are going to stay up there. You know, the, the Cardinals could technically fall down. But it looks like an AFC West team will be the five seed. That means six and seven are open. You beat the Saints on Sunday. They're five and five. We're five and six. We have the tiebreaker. That's huge. You already have the Panther tiebreaker. That is massive. You got to definitely root against the Vikings this week. And you got to root against the 49ers because the 49ers have the tiebreaker against Philadelphia following the Week 2 loss. The Falcons play, of course, on Thursday Night Football against the Patriots, root against Atlanta, because they're another team that's trying to go ahead and bump up there for the 7th seed. But as you see, even though Philadelphia is still way down there, sitting there at 4-6, and six, a couple of wins against bad football teams. We talked about them. Saints coming up here, Giants, Jets. Like, these are, these are you know, not too great football teams. Some wins in a row can go ahead and definitely give Philadelphia a chance to make the postseason. So I am uh, getting a little hyped. I'm getting a little uh, excited here, but I don't want to get, you know, the horse to, to if the cart too far ahead of the horse, but I do feel like Philadelphia, if they win on Sunday, has a very good chance of going to the postseason, and everything's been going a lot better. Defensive calls, uh, Nick Sirianni's offensive calls, running the football, Jalen Hurts played great on Sunday, so fingers crossed it's looking very, very good. Uh, predict the Eagles record at the end of the year. What do you guys think? I mean, is it going to be eight wins? Is it going to be less than eight wins? Be more than eight wins? Where are you guys at on the Eagle record prediction? Give me your thoughts down below right now in the comment section. Finally, here, a quick look again at your matchup again on, on Sunday against the Saints. Uh, the over-under is keep is very low right now at 43. Philadelphia, as we just said, is a one-point favorite. It's a favorable matchup for the Eagles defensively, but it is not a favorable matchup for the Eagles offensively because the Saint defense is playing some good football right now, and it's really holding opposing teams to the lowest rushing total in terms of total yards in the National Football League. It's the number one rush defense, as we mentioned, and Philadelphia being a top three run team the past couple of weeks is going to be a good kind of your best versus our best battle. Now, an injury update on Dallas Goddard. He is in concussion protocol, but Nick Sirianni said yesterday on his 94.1 WIP interview, he expects Goddard to be able to go. We'll see if that turns out to be true. Again, still early in the week. And of course, Alvin Kamara is the other player we're keeping an eye on here for the Saint for the Saints, as he did not play a game to decision against the Titans due to a knee injury. I expect him to go, but again, the fact he was a kind of a late scratch against the Titans means he's not going to be 100% if he does play, so keep an eye on Kamara's health. Follow me on Twitter to get updates on that, at Real Thomas Mott. All right, score prediction, Eagles versus Saints. What do you guys think? Give me your score prediction down below right now uh, in the comments section. I am taking Philadelphia to win, and I think Philadelphia's going to have another one of those, I mean, decent games, maybe 27-20 is what I'm feeling right now. Now, uh, I don't think it'll be as close. At least I hope it's not. I hope it's kind of an easy win like you had against Denver, but who really knows? Hopefully, Simeon throws us a couple of interceptions uh, in the game. Give me your score prediction down below right now. 
Again, all for today on our Philadelphia Eagles Now News and Rumor video. Mailbag coming up the next couple of days here for the weekend. Hashtag Eagles to get ahead and get your question down below. And be sure to be a subscriber because that's the best way and the only way to go ahead and get your question pulled for uh, the mailbag video. Ultimate for today on our Photo of Eagles Now News and Rumor video. Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.